go ahead. Hello everybody, welcome to IT Skills channel. In today's video, we're going to take a look at another Microsoft Security Lab, and this is going to be focusing on the SC200 certification. In this video, we're going to go ahead and get the next lab started. This lab is going to be lab three or path three of the exercise series. It's going to be path three, exercise one, which is enabling Microsoft Defender for cloud. All this time we've been focusing on Microsoft Defender for endpoint. Now we are at the point where we need to focus on Microsoft Defender for cloud. So we need to assume again, we are a Microsoft security operation analyst working for a company of our choosing, and we need to implement cloud workload protection from with Microsoft Defender for cloud in the lab we will be able to go ahead and enable Microsoft Defender for Cloud. And to do this, we're gonna be going ahead and following the steps once more. So we have to go to the new portal. We're gonna to go to portal.azure.com. And the Azure portal, we need to be having a global admin to be able to do anything. In this case, we are. So everything is good, life is good. The next thing now we're gonna do is we're gonna click on subscription. So it's not there by default. So if it's not there, we just search for it subscriptions under subscriptions we're going to go ahead and click on the azure pass this is the azure pass we got for this lab so we can show it to you and the lab over here this subscription is going to be cheap, like a very much small level subscription and it expires end of may so we gotta you know use it before then so if you click on here the balance you can see that i can click on the balance check the balance for the subscription it's going to tell me $50. That's how much the subscription is, $50. Very complete lab way, complete way to do the lab. And uh, thank you, Microsoft, for giving us the subscription. The next thing now is we're going to click on access control because we want to be able to give, you know, the ability for us to go ahead and actually, you know, grant users administrative privileges and other roles. So let's click on access control IM. Under access control, we're going to click on where it says roles. And then we're going to select privilege administrator roles. In this case here, this lists all the most important roles, because if you click on all these other ones, like all of them, it shows you everything. Here it shows you the job functions. And here it shows you privilege administrator. This is going to be admin roles that you want to grant with actual caution. Otherwise, you could end up risking security incident. So in this case, we're going to click on uh, our what we want. So we're going to click on the owner one. So we're going to select the owner. And then from the owner tab, we're going to click on select the members. So we're going to first of all, let's, let's basically select the owner. We got it. And then you can clone if we wanted to. We can do whatever we want to do. But right now, we're going to want to go ahead and actually select add and then we're going to go ahead we can actually do a custom shader role etc we can do that so now we select the owner though we checked it we need to be able to hit next and uh it's hiding a little bit so let's come over here and uh, minimize this so we can see what we're looking for i can't see it i can't see it the next option okay so we're a little bit stuck right now it's just the way my browser is okay so we need to actually under the under the owner tab we're going to click on view to get the details and then we're going to click on assignment and here on the assignment add assignment hold on click on here assignment and then we search for it or permissions in this case we can come over here do all those things if we wanted to okay so let's try this again because i didn't like this at all so let's come over here to home description our subscription is there i am roles under roles we can click on privilege function we're going to select here Okay, so now we got it. So we just need to go ahead now assign one of the users as a owner of the tenant. So to do that, we simply go to subscription, click on subscription, select I am. We're gonna click on assignment, add the role assignment. 
on the add role assignment, we're going to click on where it says privilege, you know, administrator roles. So this is the high level roles. Do not assign it unless you know what you're doing or you know who the person you're giving it to. So we're going to select this and now we're going to click on members. The member we want to give this to is going to be none other than our MOD administrator. So MOD administrator, AKA our admin, actually that's the wrong one or is it actually the right one. So we're going to select here. The next thing now is we're going to click on the conditions and we're just going to do nothing with the condition. It's going to be owner. That's fine. You know, or we can allow basically user to assign all roles highly privileged. We can give it this one and we're going to hit next view and assign. So by doing that now, we now can do anything we want to in the Azure portal. To do that, we can also check our role. So we can click on role assignment. You can see that we are owner now. So that's what we can do. We're a privileged user. That's a nice to have to be the privilege to do whatever we want to. So it's very good privilege and we are loving that. So next thing that we need to do is going to be going to search for log and network workspace so we can let Microsoft, you know, Sentinel and other things configured for this. So we're going to select, select log analytics workspace and we're going to hit open. Under here, we're going to create a new log analytic workspace. Under here, we're going to select the resource group. We're going to create a brand new resource group called RG Defender or create new, call it RG Defender. And then we're going to name it the name. We're just going to call it anything else. So let me unselect this. Just call it log. So log and network workspace 2024. Log AWS basically. And then we're going to hit review. Plus create. So he likes it. If he likes it, we're good. If he doesn't like it, then we're going to have to do it again. So this thing requires unique thing so you cannot you will not let you use the any any character that was used before that so you have to come up with something clever something unique to your t the entire azure world and so this is good we're going to now create our new log analytic workspace this is going to take a second we'll wait until the deployment is finished and it actually will tell us that if it's done or not so you can see here still deploying it's not done yet so now we got that we now need to go to the, the Microsoft Defender for Cloud page. So we're going to come over here. We can go to the resources to take a look at it. But all we now need to do is we're going to come over here to the Azure portal, search for Defender. This is the Microsoft Defender for Cloud. And on the Microsoft Defender for Cloud, we're going to click on getting, getting started. We're already on the getting started. We're going to do an upgrade. So we're going to click on upgrade. So we have the three free trial. Now we're going to upgrade it to premium. So we're going to do upgrade. That should upgrade our tenant to the premium instead of the free one. And I selected that. So it's going to take a second. So once we click it, it takes about two minutes for this to show up. So we have to wait. So it says here, could not start Microsoft Defender trial on this subscription. Please configure the subscription pricing in the settings page. Okay interesting so we got that issue and we're going to need to configure some of the things so we're going to click on environment settings and the environment settings we're going to select our azure pass and we're going to do maybe later so we got quite few settings here we're going to click on setting and monitoring so let's come back though we're going to do something else under here we're going to enable all plans. So it can cost a lot of money depending on what we're dealing with. So we just need to choose the one that's cheaper. And so you can see all the plans over here. Yeah, we're going to need to leave that alone. That's a lot of money. That is a lot of money. Look at that. $200. All of them are on except the API. That's where it costs money. So we're going to leave the API alone. And then here it is. We will probably turn on some of the things here. Yeah, so I cannot enable that one. So 
Let's hit continue. Save. So we save that. We're still enabling some of the things we already set it to do. All right, so now we're gonna go back to the Microsoft Defender plan, or Defender for Cloud rather. And we're gonna go ahead and actually do an upgrade this time. See if it will let us. So it did work this time. So we now have install agent. So it looks like it did what it's supposed to do. We're good with that. On the next thing, we're now gonna install Azure Arc on, on the on-prem service server. So let's go ahead and do that. So we're gonna click on the win win server. This is our win server, Windows server. On the Windows server is running in 2019, as you can see. And we're gonna install the Azure Arc. To do this, simply, we need to go to the on the server, we need to go to portal.office or that portal portal.azure.com rather. Can't get the word out. All right, so we need to install Azure Arc on the server, as we said. We're gonna go to portal.office or azure.com. This is gonna take us to where we can go ahead and sign in with our test slash you know simulated lab account. And then we're gonna put in our credential. We have set up MFA. MFA is something you cannot even you know avoid even with a lab account. So we have best practice. We set it up. And from here on, we're gonna hit no, don't stay sign in. It's a server. We don't like to sign in all the to it all the time. From this point on, what we need to do is search for the arc, Azure Arc. So just uh, put in Arc, for example, and it shows you Azure Arc. Azure Arc is basically your gateway of managing on-prem server on Azure. You can manage all aspects of Windows updates and other things, and it's really nice. So what we need to do is we're going to now click on where it says Add Resources, Azure Arc Resources. So we're going to click on Azure Arc Resources. And we, there's also other options we have over here, like we have, you know, Azure stack, VMware, SCCM. We have so many things. So we're going to click on add resources and we want to go ahead in this case, add a machine, add a machine. And we can actually add a single server, multiple servers or server from manage update services. So we can do it from generated script. So we're going to generate the script. Before that, we have to actually create a resource group. Everything in Azure is run done with a resource group. And we're doing a single server, so that is perfectly fine. So we're gonna just use our RG Defender resource group, and then we're gonna call. We're gonna put this on the US East region. Don't put. There's no point in putting Europe or any other place. We are in the United States after all, and we're gonna put it there. It's gonna be Windows, obviously. You can do this with Linux and other operating system. You can do with Linux right now, so it's Windows. The next thing is I wanted to figure out whether this is going to be public endpoint or private endpoint. So I'll we're basically going to go ahead and actually keep this on the, what it was before, which is public endpoint. As far as the connectivity method goes, we don't change that. Next, we can see the tagging if we wanted to, and then we can download the script download and run the script that's what we got to do next sticking a little bit but it should come up in a second it's a little delayed it come on more than usual come on microsoft where is that script at where is it at come on so we got everything here okay so is it gonna just be stuck like that huh it's taking his, his sweet time let me just get there Oh man, it's taking longer. I'll wait for two minutes. If it doesn't work, we'll have to go ahead and, and redo this again. You get to see it twice because it's taking so long. What is the problem with it? Can I refresh it? It's probably going to kick me out, isn't it? So here it is, our resource group. We like to be on the roll, you know, so let me try this again. I'm going to try EasyUS 2, just in case there's something wrong with that. And then let's download it. This there you go. I'm not sure what's going on with that region, but we can now see our resource group, and we can just download that. We're gonna keep the file. It thinks it's probably not good, and uh, we're gonna also duplicate this just to kind of show you what we got going on right now in the Azure Arc portal. Going back home, Azure Arc, we got nothing going on right now. There's no server. There's nothing here going on. So 
if we click on all Azure Arc resources, we got nothing. So by the time we run that script, we should see the good stuff on the server added. So now we got go to the downloads, open the download folder. This is the script we got. So we're going to just copy the path. Multiple ways to run this. So go to PowerShell, run as administrator, always change our directory and then the backslash. We're going to do that onboard scripting and we're going to say, you know what? We're going to run it. Hit R for run. Installing Azure Arc machine agent. It's doing all the prerequisite stuff. And it looks like we have an operation timed out over here. So it says we need to download that. It's, I wonder if it's doing it for us. Well, I shall see. And I should make a big screen on this because it is tiny after all. Okay, never for a Internet Explorer. Do it for Edge always. So it's going to now want us to sign in. And then it says authentication complete. You can now close the application. Great. So it did it. We logged in. This is our tenant. It got the correlation ID, resource ID. And we're good. All right. So now that is completed, we now going to need to check our Azure Arc portal or our Azure portal and make sure that all is good. So let's go ahead and do that real quick. So we will go ahead and check our Azure Arc portal. So let's go ahead and minimize this. We don't really need it technically. We can hit refresh. There is our win server and uh, we can confirm that's our server that we added right now because it will tell us so. We can come to the, you know, CMD or even in, within the PowerShell window, really, and just do host name. And you can see our server name win server. Super basic stuff. Now you can see here we have it, the server managed in Azure Arc. So we can come over here, get more details from it. So the server is running server 2019 data center evaluation. This is our subscription details. It's on the ECS2 activity. It shouldn't be a lot of activity except, you know, the fact that we add it here and you can do other things, obviously. But the point is that this is a way for us to do, you know, to connect our on-prem resources to Azure Arc to get the best and advanced features from Microsoft. Next, now what we need to do is on the Windows server, we need to do something called Azure monitor agent by adding the Windows service. So to get started, we're going to go ahead and click on Microsoft Defender for Cloud. So we're going to just open a new tab and we're going to monitor the server with Microsoft, you know, Defender for Cloud basically. So we're going to click on Defender for Cloud. On this says getting started, we got a couple things going on. We now want one, what we want to do is we want to do upgrade. So we're going to click on here and we're going to do upgrade. So it's doing upgrade right now. Once this upgrade is done, then we can take the next steps. You can see it's still working on those. So now that we got this going on, we want, we want to go ahead and configure some more things. So we got the Defender plan upgraded. We can also install agent and other things. So, so what we want to do first is going to be once we did the upgrade we're going to add you know servers but before we do that before we do that important stuff we're going to hit install agents and so the agent installation is initiated that's fine so now what we want to do is going to be going ahead getting started and the getting started we're going to add server so we're going to add a none we're going to add a non Azure server or we can add multi environment. So we can, let's see non Azure server and we got our log analytic workspace already. We don't need to create another one. So it's loading still want us to upgrade. Okay. That's fine. We will do it. Let's upgrade it. Now we're going to hit add server. We're going to select the data collection rules first, and we're going to have to create new data collection rules. From here on, we're going to just call this one, you know, win server, something super simple, win server DCR. So why is it not typing here? 
win server dcr data collection role on the resource group we're gonna keep it on the same resource group rg defender it's gonna be windows on the data collection endpoint we want to go ahead and actually leave it be or add it later on here so we're gonna come over here all right so now we're gonna hit next on the resource it's gonna be windows for now on the resource tab we're gonna add a resource and here is our resource and we can add it from a subscription level or from that so we're gonna just click on rg defender fly and then next collect drivers and uh, collect and deliver we want to go ahead and add a so data source like the data source we want to collect windows performance counter you know cpu memory we can set up specific alerts and etc but right now we're just going to keep focus on the performance counter so that's fine next on the distant type you want to send it this to azure log azure monitor logs and then it's going to be in the workspace that workspace right there so now that we did this we're going to hit add data source and then we can hit view plus create this is a summary of our things if we if, we, if it's good and if we get everything checked out it's going to go ahead and create it for us this is going to take us a little bit since deployment is completed so now we're going to go to resource when server dcr is there data sources is there we're getting performance counter resources is there and we're adding our win server here this is our win server so all is good now so now on the azure since we added the azure monitor windows agent the status successful we can now go to click on actually the windows server so if we go to resources click here and now we can go ahead to where it says so we're gonna need to actually go back actually and go to microsoft defender for cloud and then now under here we need to click on inventory and you can see our windows server is there now obviously he's got a recommendation already going for us what is or some type of red alert so let's click on that you can see here machine should have vulnerability assessment solution and healthy so it's already got that and uh, honestly it's really awesome already and it gets life it makes life easier for it now because we can monitor this and you can you know let it microsoft defender for cloud manage for us and that's amazing right there now that's the end of the lab but before we end it we're gonna just take a look at a couple things that will make sure that we understand here so on the overview this is our microsoft defender it tells us that we have one subscription to assess resources there's no attack path no no security alerts and then getting started it was how we get it all configured so we don't need to do that anymore everything is all good next the recommendation here's what we're going to probably see recommendation so this is a risk-based recommendation you know risk based recommendation per resources so now we see the machine should have vulnerability assessment and recommendation going for us subscription should have a contact email so it's recommending for a lot of things but right now we're just going to go recommendation for this the machine it tells you how to fix it you can fix it you can exempt to make exemption for it and if i do fix right now will it fix it let's click on fix the machine should have a vulnerability assessment solution so I'm trying to see if it will fix it by hitting fix. It is hyperlink, but will it work? So to fix it, here's actually how we fix it. Use the, the, the Microsoft Defender for Cloud in built-in governance mechanism, service now, ITSM to assign recommendation to the right owner. So you can do that. This graph about it. So still we got plenty to go to go on this one, but for now you have seen the idea, the idea is there we get more telemetry data and this makes us our life easier yeah that this is a long one but it is very crucial for all of us to do it if we are managing a production env environment this is going to be the key you know and it will give you a little bit more of a security exposure you can see like firewall manager 
and you can see if there's any issues azure firewall virtual machine virtual networks if i if there was any you could see that but right now for the purpose of this our inventory we're dealing with one here and so we're focused on this one you can you can already see alerts installed application and detect anything because it's a server but eventually we should get more data coming in and we need to fix this sensor health anyway and we should be able to fix it you know it's in the future videos yeah that's all i have guys thanks for watching you have a great rest of the day if you haven't already subscribed please subscribe take care Bye bye